Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric, and we got a brand new and fun episode for you guys this week, because I set a cheap Casio Loopy for sale, and I make bad financial decisions, so here we are. We couldn't call ourselves Video Game Esoteric if we didn't do really random stuff like this, so let's talk about the Loopy. Before we get too far involved, then do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you like what we do here and want to support the source of stupidity, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But the Casio Loopy was the first and only video game console designed specifically to target the female audience. And honestly, I mean, I guess boys could like it too. Stickers are stickers. And all children love knowing on the front of that box that this has a RISC architecture CPU because of course kids are going to want to know the architecture of the processor in the box. It's a really fun and weird detail to include on something designed specifically for children. But if we turn the box around, they went full tilt on the marketing with this thing. It is pastel blues and purples and greens and yellows and oranges all day long. And if you can't tell, this has a very big anime aesthetic to the whole thing. They even went on the bottom of the box and used some more of those pastels just to put that Loopy logo down there. But the main reason I actually really like the Casio Loopy is from a design object standpoint because I have an art background. I'm a filmmaker and I went through a lot of art history classes in college and some of my favorites were design aesthetics and object design. This is an amazing looking piece of hardware. It might not be the most exciting thing from a gameplay perspective, but this just has so many curves and so many large tactile buttons on it. It is a very interesting object just to play with. You'll see there that sticker printer paper door that we will get into very quickly. But this thing has the biggest object button ever and it'll launch a cartridge. Let's just hit this as hard as we can and I will catch it in midair. It is big, it is beefy, and it is fun to check out. And that's what I mean. This piece of hardware from a design perspective is extremely unique. The colors, the textures of the plastic, how large the buttons are. Whoever designed this as an object did an amazing job. It might be one of the best looking consoles of all time in my opinion. But the main hook for the Loopy is it could also print stickers, and of course that's always been and probably always will be a big thing in Japan, not so much so in North America unless you're in a dive bar. They've got a photo booth in the corner, that happens a lot in Chicago. But it's really easy to pop that paper in and out, stickers print out of this front assembly right here, and you cut them with this a little button. This does work, and I will show you right now from a different period in time when I was testing this. Apologize for the flicker on the lights, the hue light bulbs do not play well with the shutter speeds of any type, but you'll see here, it does print stickers, push that button, and we're going to get a gray, actually it's an orange cat right out of the loopy. Taking a look at the back, this is very simple hardware. You have a contrast dial, you have a power in, and then you just have composite RCA jacks. No S video, nothing like that. And you have a single controller input on the front, and you cannot daisy chain controllers. This is from start to finish a one player console. But if we're talking about the controller, let's talk about the controller, because I would say this is actually relatively good. You get a four button setup and kind of a Neo Geo Arcade Arc, a start button that's centrally located nowhere two trigger buttons and an extremely beefy d-pad which is a little bit squishy but not so bad and it does fit my hand well but I don't have the biggest hands apparently my hands are about the size of a Japanese child's but it's honestly relatively decent and I played with a lot worse controllers and just taking a look at the close-up there that design language from the console itself is carried over and it looks absolutely spectacular visually but it wouldn't be Video Game Esoteric if I didn't open up this rare and random hardware and talk about it. You'll see here that there's seven screws on the bottom, one of them being really not centrally located in the middle of the console. And through the magic of editing, I will take one screw out and the rest will happen off camera. But I do this upside down is the easiest way to deal with it. And I will say getting the top shell off a Casio Loopy is an exercise in extreme frustration. I almost thought I wasn't going to be able to get into this thing without breaking it. But if you apply pressure to the right of the console right near that cutting button you can get one tab to pop and then the thing does open up you want to make sure you have the sticker printing paper and that door off before you do it as well I couldn't do it off camera I had to do it elsewhere but this is the inside of a Casio loop and it's a pretty concise design taking a look here you have that button that cuts things we'll go over that in a little bit a motor to advance that printer paper a power supply which I'm not gonna bother showing you it's just capacitors and bits and then some RF shielding cartridge slot 
and some ribbon cable going back and forth from the main motherboard over to the power supply and the sticker printing section. But this is that gigantic assembly that you eject cartridges with. It is massive. It is completely overbuilt. I'm surprised they made it this industrious, but I mean, I guess it's a sign for kids. What does it really matter? But the fun comes when we get this RF shield off and it takes a long time to get that cartridge eject port out. But as we get underneath here, right to the left, that big NEC chip is a SH7021 Super H CPU. It is 32-bit, and some of the technology in here would go on to become the SH2 for the Sega Saturn and 32X. It is in the same family. We got one megabyte of RAM, a two megabyte ROM, and I have absolutely no idea what that Casio custom chip does there. And there's a button on the motherboard. It is a very elegant and simple design, but taking a closer look, this may be the first time anyone's seen the motherboard of a Casio Loopy. I really do not know but it is fun just to check things out with like this big beefy power switch directly on the motherboard it's definitely feeling overbuilt i mean i know this was a console designed for kids but it has a really elegant look both to the shell as well as the motherboard it is very concise and i do enjoy that and i mentioned earlier i would talk about the sticker cutter because i've seen a lot of reports of these breaking online so this is what the assembly looks like and if i just put a random piece of paper in here a recall notice for the water pump for our vehicle you can see how it actually cuts that sticker paper it's quite interesting maybe a little bit over designed with all those different springs and levers in there but it certainly looks nice when it's working but taking a look at the games themselves it's a very similar box to the super famicom and if you couldn't tell they were targeting a female demographic with these you can now although honestly any gender can play with the sticker printer so let's just keep saying it's for kids it's definitely an anime aesthetic from start to finish. This here, all you do is print stickers and design different backgrounds for people and for animals and for fruit. But, I mean, that's what this console was marketed for. It was a very niche demographic. But taking a look on the inside, you get the cartridge, you get a manual, and this one came with a sticker holder, which I will go over shortly. But it's relatively nice quality for what it is. I mean, this was a kid's product, but they definitely didn't cheap out at Casio. Let's get rid of this thing right here. The cartridge feels a little bit like a Super Famicom cartridge, but it has its own sort of unique flair to it. It is quite tall. There's a couple indents in the front. It's a single PCB, nothing like a Neo Geo here. You didn't need that much storage on these whatsoever. But just like the console and the controller, the design aesthetic is very nice in this. And you'll see the serial number sticker on the back of the box matches the one on the back of the cart. So this is a complete set. I'm really, really glad that's the case because of course I've been coveting this for the longest time. That is not true at all. I bought this for fun. And the cartridge even has a little bump on the top. So the label is not applied flush and that's the first time I've seen that. And this one has that sticker holder. You stick the sticker to it once and I guess you're done. It's in there. I'm never going to use it, but it is a fun little thing. And Casio even went the extra mile by including a full color manual. And not everyone did that back in the day. They clearly cared about this product and it didn't sell whatsoever. It was an abject failure for them, but not for lack of trying. Basically just lack of reading the market and realizing this probably didn't need to exist. Now I have two games for the Loopy. I have no idea what either of the titles are. I could probably look it up. Where's the fun in that? And the bigger quote unquote game is this where you get a puppy and you raise it and you fight a lima bean at one point. I am going to do some videos on the games themselves and it does come with the full instruction kit as well as a little jam clear and two q-tips with pointy ends to clear the print heads off into the loopy itself. It's never been opened and I don't see any reason why. And I even got two brand new sticker paper bundles with this when I purchased it. So I can print cat stickers as long as I want. And I will say that the print quality on this is quite good. That crab and this cat kind of looks like normal here. Look relatively nice as far as everything's concerned. So high marks on the print quality of this. And you'll see here going into the game and I will show you these later. Leave me a comment down below. Do you want one episode? on each or do you want a combo episode for both? I almost put this all together into one video but I decided to change my mind at the last second. But this is real Casio Loopy footage running on a real Casio Loopy through a capture card. But yeah, I bought this on a whim. It's video game esoterica and if we don't do weird things now and again, we start to lose our reputation. So I bought a Casio Loopy and it honestly wasn't that much expense. It's like $150 shipped from Japan with everything that you've seen here. But it's a fun footnote in the history of video games when Casio decided that there was a market for a 
female child specific sticker printing console for the home market. It failed completely and I'm sure you understand why. But leave me a comment down below. Do you, have you ever seen a Cassiolupi? Are you interested in seeing gameplay? I'll have at least one more video out. But yeah, that's the Cassiolupi. Prince Cat stickers. See you next time. Bye bye.